Hi, I am your co-host behind the scenes, Alexis Hunter, and I'm here with our host, Dr. Terrell Bird. In the words of my favorite artist, Jill Scott, you're here, I'm pleased, I really dig your company. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in to another episode of the Power To Be Show. As you know, we meet, we've meet. we met with different entrepreneurs from different areas. We've had professors, we've had a uh, director of uh, franchising at Palm Beach Atlantic, but just a wealth of people working in different areas and just hearing their stories of how, um, how life has just, basically life has just happened and how those experiences has guided um, their entrepreneurial journey and how God has been in the midst of every every situation. Uh, today we have with us Mr. Kevin Lawson of KVL Media. You might know him from the uh, Happy Hour Headshots and I definitely recommend his services. If you go to our website and you see pictures of Dr. Bird, Kevin Lawson took those pictures. And so we are just excited about having him on the show and hearing his journey. Uh, you never know where life is going to take you. But in those instances, you're learning, you're gaining, they're stepping stones, and it's just a whole experience. So we hope that you enjoy what you hear today. Now on to our show. Welcome to another episode of the Power to Me Show. Be creative. Be connected and be courageous. Worship does not stop on Sunday. Thank you, Alexis. I'm Dr. Terrell Bird, and I am so delighted today to have Kevin Lawson with us. I am happy because I want to know his story, and I love stories. So, Kevin, it's good to have you with us. Man, I really appreciate you inviting me on the show. When we did your headshot, it's, I mean, I, I was inspired by your story, what you were doing. I was like... Have well, me and, and, and and you did a job too. You did a good job. I appreciate we, uh, that. we, I think my head is all over the place now. So, <laughs> yeah. so we're we're good. I enjoyed nice. it and uh, look forward to working with you in the future as well. Tell me something, uh, Kevin. Uh, the work you do. How did you start this? What what's your story? So I actually started in college. Okay. So I went to the University of Central Florida okay. and I was helping a friend out with his modeling agency. Okay. So he wanted to recruit some models for his agency. Um, and then he got a, a camera. So I was doing a lot of the behind the scenes photos, videos, and things like that. And that's kind of how I got into the wow. industry. Yeah. So you were you were watching what he was doing and said, Oh, I can do this too, or what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were kind of learning at the same time, yeah. to be honest. Um yeah. so yeah, um he brought me in and he was like, Yo, I need some help, you wow. know. So wow. um just kind of started doing some behind the scenes stuff. I I started doing kind of fashion direction. Okay. Um uh, like making clothes and stuff like that, recruiting okay. models and, and doing a little bit of everything, you know? Okay. So um, it started off with working with a lot of different models, music artists and things like that. Okay. Um, and then people started asking me to to do the pictures, like their, their weddings and, and all kind of stuff. And um, after I graduated with my marketing degree, I wanted to kind of shift to where I was doing a lot more corporate photography and corporate gotcha. videos and things like that gotcha. to really kind of help the small business um, atmosphere that was in Orlando. Okay, so so the entrepreneurial spirit, I mean, it seems like that's something that you just came with. You you had yeah. it, huh? Yeah, I've always I've always had it. I kind yeah. of attribute it to my dad who's um a serial entrepreneur, but yeah, I mean, back when I was younger, I used to sell CDs in high school like mixtapes and things okay. like that. So, um back when uh uh, Napster and all of that. So okay. you just download the songs and then yeah, yeah. put it together on a mix. People would give me their list and I would just kind of um, put it together and I would sell it. Wow. Um, on that. And yeah. like when I was younger than that, I used to sell candy and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Clean people's blinds. Like yeah. I was always trying to figure out different ways to make wow. money. Yeah. yeah. I think there's something about having kind of the autonomy and having the kind of independence to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And I think that's kind of like what entrepreneurship is all about, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're always taught, or at least I was um, always pushed to kind of go to school, get good grades, get a good job, mm -hmm. work in a good career. 
Um, but I always had that drive of, yeah. of being an entrepreneur, um, taking my ideas and making them a reality, yeah. turning my ideas into business, yeah. something that's sustainable and able to kind of um, to, to bring in revenue from. Wow. So, I was going to kind of get into like maybe what inspired you. And I, I heard you say your father yeah. is into it. So what ways did he inspire you? Were you watching him yeah. do his thing? Is that Yeah, what it was always just kind of watching him do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, making deals, um, showing up to different different projects and things like that, um, just speaking with different individuals, negotiating and things like that. So yeah. I kind of, I, I think that I subconsciously kind of got that instilled yeah. into me right. over time. But um, honestly, I think it's, 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 there's a little bit of naturalness to it. Okay. It, it might just be in my DNA. It's in your DNA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, you're just born to be yeah, an entrepreneur. Yeah, just born, in, born <laughs> yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 Well, so. I, you know, one of the things that I've been doing is, um, I teach at a, at a university, but I also serve as a, a city network leader looking at the integration of faith and work. Because, you know, I think that sometimes people think that Sunday is all there is to faith. But, you know, every day we're living out our faith by what we do. And so I just believe that people who are engaged in this kind of uh, small business, entrepreneurship, they're doing it because they possess a gift. Have you ever thought of your life as, as a gifted life and, and that you have been blessed with what you do or are able to do? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely blessed to be able to do what we yeah, do. And yeah. I mean, we blessed to be, be breathing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Waking up today was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so to add on top of that, the ability to pursue a passion yeah. that you have, is a blessing. The ability to even understand what your passion is right. is a blessing. I think um, as we kind of move forward, especially in a post-COVID society, um, I think a lot more people are starting to figure out what their passions are yeah, and, and yeah. what their dreams are and what their desires are. Yeah. And um, the ability to kind of pursue that, I think it's it's amazing. That's, that's, that's awesome. You you have to have faith yeah. to continue to pursue All right. those passions because at the end of the day, you're going to run into a lot of different obstacles. Okay, okay. I did. Okay. Everybody that's been in business has. Yeah, I, I was so. going to I was going to kind of get into that yeah. because, you know, you've got your your own studio. It looks like, you know, you got out of college, yeah. you started doing your thing with this. What was that like? Give me some some of the steps that you <laughs> took to get to where you are now. Well, it wasn't an easy path. Okay. By any means. Okay. Um so the 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 goal was to always go to school and get a good job. So like I went and I got internships and things like that. And when I graduated, I really wanted to kind of work in the advertising field. I wanted mm -hmm. to work in an ad agency, but I didn't really want to move to New York or California or anything like that. So okay. I, I kind of wanted to stay in Orlando. I, I built a strong network of friends and, um, okay. and family up there as well. Um, so I didn't really want to want to move to to New York or California. Um, so I stayed I stayed in Orlando and I couldn't really find a job in the industry. Okay. Like, although I had good grades, although I had experience and in internships and things like that, I couldn't find a job in the industry that I wanted to. Um, but I did get an opportunity to work for um, a school, um, Full Sail University. Okay. And I actually ended up going going back to Full Sail to get my master's degree. Now, what kind of school? This is a, a entertainment? A, a uh, entertainment and media yeah. school. Okay. So um, they specialize in everything from recording arts to um, filmmaking. Um, they, they, they started doing business Okay. Um, uh, entertainment business um, degrees okay. as well. Um, digital arts. I got um, you. Everything like that, you know. So entertainment marketing school. And I'd be on the phone and my job was to recruit people. I was in okay. the admissions department. So my job was to recruit people. So every day I had conversations about what people's <laughs> dreams are, okay. what their passions are, wow. what they really want to do. Yeah. And I talked to people every single day about their dreams and passions. And I took a look in the mirror one day and I was like, Kev, you're a fraud. <laughs> yeah. You, you really over here telling people that they can pursue all their dreams and passions and you're not really looking looking yourself in the mirror to really pursue oh, it. Okay. So I learned a lot okay. through the experience and and I love the job. I love the people. Okay. Um, I love the the training that we were getting. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew that I had to take it a step further to kind of pursue my career, yeah. my passions, and yeah. really kind of understand what my passions wow. are. Wow. I, I love that. What I what I really appreciate is some people, they go to school, but they never really apply what they're actually learning in school. So it's almost like a disconnect between 
theory and practice. And it seems like you were getting the theory yeah. and preparing yourself to be able to do the practice. And Absolutely. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. And all the people that touch your life. So, okay, you're, you're in school, you're learning, you're watching people do their thing. Mm -hmm. You're listening and you're mm -hmm. saying, uh, I, I need to do this too. I need to do Absolutely. something like this. So what did you do? So um, I actually went back to school. Um, and during that time, um, we already had a studio, um, okay. me and my business partner, Zach, uh, up in Orlando. Um, okay. So we created Dynasty Studio. So the same person that I kind of started working with to recruit models for, uh -huh. we opened up a studio um, in, in Winter Park, which was actually right down the street from Full Sail. Okay. So I decided to go to school online um, and then pursue my dreams of um, being a photographer, creating films, um, okay. things like that um, with the studio. So um, did that and... Um, I recognize, you know what, this is hard. <laughs> this is hard to pay it's your hard. bills of oh, being wow. an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um when right right before, maybe like a month before I graduated with my master's degree from full sale, um, I got the offer um to to work as a marketing assistant for okay. a company um that sold um telecommunications to okay. the government. Um so I was working with there working there and I was making more money than I ever had made before. So okay. I was able to kind of buy my house, buy my car. Um, I had a motorcycle at the time. So okay. I was able to kind of like live comfortably. You were living your you best know? life. I was living my best life. <laughs> you know, I was 25 years yeah, old. Yeah, I, yeah. I had my house, I had my car, like yeah, I had my motorcycle, yeah, like yeah. we were hanging out, like it, it was good, like, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but still something was driving me to continue to create. Okay. Um, still working with, work, working with Dynasty. Um, still kind of doing some different things. Like we started launching magazines and things like that. So I still had that drive to create, but okay. I was living comfortably okay. and all that went away when I got laid off because um, the company actually ran off of disasters that happened. So they got really big and a lot of funding when Katrina happened. Uh -huh. And then um, there was another set of hurricanes as well yeah. um, that, that came, that came up, but there was a stretch for a few years where mm. no hurricane hit, nothing happened, mm -hmm. no tornadoes or anything like that were, wow. were, were hitting. So it was good for society as a whole, but you, you know, for the people. But, but, but you were having business, a natural, right? You have yeah, a natural disaster with right, your life. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah. the business kind of like, it, it, it folded, oh, you know, so, wow. so it went under and that was my sign. I was like, you know what? Um, I was, I was trying to do this while I was in school. I got a job. Here's the time. Here's mm. really the time to take off. Mm. Um, I wasn't prepared for it yet. Wow, I still wasn't prepared. So I, yeah. yeah, Kevin, it's amazing yeah. how many times I hear uh, people who start business say they started as a result of of, of losing a job or being laid off from a job, yeah. and it's got it's kind of like that created the space mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally to be able to yeah. move into something different. So Absolutely. it sounds like that happened with yeah. you. So then what? So, you, okay. Yeah. So after that, I mean, I spent about two years. Okay. Um, struggling, fighting, getting clients. Mm. Um, I was working out of different co-working spaces. I was, I was doing a little bit of everything. You okay. know, I was doing headshots. I was building websites, doing logos, and everything like that. Not, I, it's, it's a funny story. We learned. I, I learned a lot through that process of why that didn't actually work. But mm. I actually had to go back and get another job. Okay. Which I said that I wasn't going to do, but I was like, you know what? Let me humble myself. Okay. Um. Uh. These bills need to get paid, yeah. you know? So um, I got another job. Um, I was doing corporate sales for office supplies company. Mm -hmm. um, so I was calling um, business to business. Okay. Um, so it was really like a real focus on sales, sales activities, yeah, yeah. making phone calls, filling out orders, um, selling them on, on extra features that we had and things like that. And I learned a lot through that process as well. I was well. going to say, a lot of these, what maybe seem like pitfalls are learning opportunities, it seems Absolutely. like. Your learning and your marketing skills, your communication skills, communication and all those sales, things seem, everything. yeah, relationships, yeah. yeah. relationships. Building a network. I guess Absolutely. that's what you've been doing, right? right. It's building network. Yeah. So you worked, you went back, and then what? And then how did you, what was your next steps to getting out of that hole that you seem to so, found yourself? Yeah, so I, I started working for that company, and I realized, you know what, I hated it. I hated going to, going to work every day. Yeah. Um, I hated being in a cubicle Okay, and just pulling up to the office. It really kind of felt like once I was walking through those doors, wow. I didn't want to be there. Okay. Like, I was going to compare it to something else, but I'm here with a pastor, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it, it really kind yeah. of felt like a place where I didn't want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
I got fired from that job. Okay. And after that happened, mm -hmm. I decided that no matter what, I'm going to make this entrepreneurship thing work. Okay. Okay. Um, and I did. Okay. Um, although my house started going into foreclosure, mm. I was able to sell it and kind of recruit some of my, uh, mm -hmm. my equity in that home. Mm -hmm. And what I decided to do after that was travel. So I traveled the world. I went to visited a bunch of different co-working spaces. I did two cross country road trips. I was in California and Atlanta. I was in the Bay area and back in Orlando, I started traveling basically everywhere in the world. I went to Greece, wow. Thailand, wow. Um, Canada, Jamaica, um, Mexico. So you, you, you want Panama. to see the, what were you, you were searching or you just, you just, just, <laughs> something, well, was, something was, something was driving, saying, something was driving me to okay, do it. Okay. So yeah. something was driving me to, to, to be able to, to pursue that and live yeah, my life and, yeah. and really kind of get experiences on um, how the world's living and really kind of get perspective okay. because I had all of the, all of the skill sets necessary to, to really pursue my passions. Mm -hmm. I had all of the, um, the, 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 the education to mm -hmm. pursue, mm -hmm. but I don't think I had the mindset as okay. Yet. Okay. And I so really those world, to... those, that kind of global experience did, it, it changed you. huh? I think it added to, it, it added to what I needed to really kind of pursue. Okay. Okay. what my goals were out of okay. life being able okay. to see the world yeah really kind of gave me a, an opportunity to kind of see the world i mean without <laughs> yeah. without really kind of like repeating myself but yeah really that's, seeing the world okay. and really kind of understanding yeah. myself you know okay. and and really kind of pursuing what i what i needed to do yeah. so um after that after that experience of just kind of traveling everywhere i kind of settled down back in back in west palm beach um and my goal was to open up a studio and really kind of um, uh, take some of the equity that I brought from my house and open up a studio, but I couldn't find one for a year. Wow. Um, so I, I worked, um, in the back of a boutique. I, I, I had kind of a setup back there with my computer and a backdrop. Um, I, I joined a co-working space in downtown West Palm beach. Um, and I was working out of there. I was kind of shooting some headshots in the conference room. And I had my desk set up and things like that. Um, and then finally, uh, there was uh, the space that I'm in now. Mm -hmm. um, they reached back out to me after maybe like eight months. Mm -hmm. Nothing was available. And they reached out to me and they were like, you know what? There's a space available. I went and check it out. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Yeah. Um, it was a, actually an old motorcycle repair or motorcycle rental okay. um, space. Uh -huh. And I was looking at it. I was like, man, there's, there's oil stains on the ground. <laughs> the bathroom's filthy. Yeah. The place looks crazy, but... I'm going to build something out of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You saw potential there. <laughs> I saw potential. Yeah, yeah. And then the funny thing happened. I walked out the door and I saw another photographer that I knew, that I had met uh -huh. through some of the networking that I did. Yeah. And he was like, yo, what are you doing here? I was like, yo, I'm opening up the photography studio. And he was like, you know what? I'm getting out of the photography business. Come check out, come check out my space. And they had already, they already um, kind of uh, got rid of their lease or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they were getting ready to move out that month. So as I'm moving in, this motorcycle space became available and the, the, the space directly next door to mine was becoming available. And he said, you know what? The, the space is available. I walk in, everything is already set up. Already set up. Wood floors, <laughs> freshly painted, yeah, a yeah, psych yeah. wall installed. The yeah. bathroom is nice. Yeah, yeah. Lights on the, um, on the ceilings. I was like, this is nothing but God. Yeah, that's that. That's what I'm saying. That this, this path that you're God. going on, yeah. God is directing. Yeah. And when something's for you, it's yeah. for you. I I like what you said. Even though I know you you, you got fired from a job, but you yeah. said that you didn't like going into that space every right. day. That because I do believe it did something to my spirit. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I'm saying that there has to be some kind of spiritual yeah. peace yeah. that you get from what you're doing every day. Absolutely. Why do it, right? I mean, yeah. why do stuff that's not giving you the kind of fulfillment and peace in your right. in your life? So right. it sounds like as you begin to pursue that, then things start to open the up. The doors right? start to open up. Wow. Um and it, it always gives me chills when I tell that story. Yeah. about how I showed up got a space i was appreciative of wow. that space i saw the vision of it yeah and then i walk out and i see a friend wow and his dad was a contractor he built everything out 
Wow. Um, and everything was perfect and set up and ready to go for me to yeah. just step right into it. Timing. So I was in that space for maybe the weekend, mm -hmm. two or three days, and they moved out the next day uh, after that, and I moved right in. Um, and I was able to kind of build out the studio. Um, it was a starting platform. It was a, it was a much better start mm -hmm, for me mm -hmm. to build out sure. how I wanted to. So sure. I just added my extra sauce, um, started putting in cabinets, putting in the furniture and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it came out perfectly. And wow. it was, it, it's a blessing. Honestly. Wow. That is, yeah. yeah, that is a blessing. I was going to ask you, uh, what would you say are some of, if you're going to advise somebody, if you're going to give a young entrepreneur some mm -hmm. advice, give him yeah. a word, what would be say three or four challenges that one would have to overcome to do what you did. Is there anything you can think about that you would give as advice? You have to have faith okay. if you have a vision. Okay. If you know where you're going, okay. have faith that it's going to become a reality okay. because there's going to be a lot of distractions, mm -hmm. a lot of roadblocks, and even a lot of opportunities that will distract you from that vision. Okay. The other one is to pick a niche okay. and solve a problem within that niche with okay. a specific So you mean a service. niche? You mean something a, that, yeah, niche, yeah something, something that you're, you can do? Absolutely. Okay. So I think one of the big things that I learned um, to kind of bring back what I was saying earlier, um, back when I was um, struggling to, to kind of make sure that I'm getting the proper revenue for my business, I was mm -hmm. doing everything. I was doing headshots. I was doing... Uh, websites, I was doing logo design, I was doing all of these different things, but I wasn't known for anything specifically. Mm -hmm. So you had to and find I, your own niche. You say, I, yeah, that one. And I thing, had mentors yeah. telling me at the time, like, yo, specialize in something, you know, like do videos or, or or specialize in the camera. And at the time, like, I'm realizing hindsight is 2020 is like, I was preparing myself for something bigger. Okay. But when I moved down to West Palm Beach, I was like, let me take this advice and let me become a specialist in something. Mm -hmm. So I specialized in headshots. Yeah. And I became known as the expert in West Palm Beach for headshots. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I started doing different, like yeah. different networking events. And I was sure. like, you know what? There's networking and I'm specializing in headshots. I'm going to start something called Headshot Happy Hour. And it blew up. Wow. You know, so that's how I was able to get my name out sure. in another way because people were, I, I was able to fit a lot more people um, to, to kind of do headshots at a, at a yeah. singular time. Yeah. And then I was able to work with different organizations okay. um, that, that were throughout Palm Beach County right. um, to be able to do headshots for their members and they were able to promote it. So I did something called Headshot Happy Hour. Headshot Happy Hour. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So, like um, so me actually following the, the advice of people that came before me mm -hmm. and picking that niche with that specific products and service, mm -hmm. I became a specialist in that. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of compare it to, even if you have a problem with your knee, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're going to trust a brain surgeon and his advice more than you would trust a general practitioner. They're both doctors, mm -hmm. but you feel like that specialist, specialist knows a yeah, little bit more, yeah, yeah. even if it's about your knee, it That's has right. nothing to do with your brain. Right, right. But you're going to take the advice of that brain surgeon because yeah. they're a specialist. They're specialists. That's their area. So, yeah. So I would recommend any entrepreneur become a specialist in something. Okay. Solve a specific problem. Okay. And, um, and, and that's how you grow. So yeah. I would say. So faith, have faith in what you're doing. Have faith in what you're and doing. And then your uh, get the niche, have, do something, find, solve a problem. Yeah. A problem needs to be solved, solve yeah. it, right? Okay, yeah. so identify and, that and problem. Identify that specific problem and, yeah. and follow yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I got to come up with a third one, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let me, let but, me see. But, I'm, I'm, I'm going to But I, I just think you can give some advice to some people that I'm have been. You. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, because I think I heard some, even in the midst of your talking, yeah. that there is this idea of stick to itness yeah. and determination. So, yeah. and I know that may be along of having faith to do it, but some people give up, man. So you I know? would say the third one yeah. is, and this is very common and I hate to be like whatever the word is, but um, your net work is really and truly your net worth. Okay. okay. And what I'll add on top of that mm -hmm. is to really understand your value. Understand. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people, they'll sell themselves short. Mm -hmm. um, 
But once you build a network, you're going to raise up your net worth mm -hmm. by having a good set of people around you, okay. meeting people in different sure. fields. Sure. Um, and they don't have to be exactly like you. Meet somebody that's completely different from you, mm -hmm. you know, and build a network of individuals, mm -hmm. letting them know what you do. Yeah. And that will increase your perceived value mm -hmm. of what you can charge for your products and services. Okay. I'm wondering if your kind of global experience, travel, help you to to gain this confidence of of meeting people, different people. Is that and 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 maybe even valuing yourself, valuing yourself a lot more because you've been engaging with a lot more people. I don't know. It's possible. Yeah. I, I give a lot of credit to my parents. Yeah. You know, um, which always told me to you could be anything in the world. Hold your head up high. Good. In any room that you walk into. Good. Be yourself. Good. And and understand your value as a human being. Good. Um, yeah. And uh, that's kind of what, what I've always done. Is yeah. Because even as a young person, I would always walk into classrooms where it wasn't as um, diverse as as, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as things are. Yeah. You yeah. know, as, as the reality of, of life, um, being in, like, AP classes and things like that. Um, but understanding that people are people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think having that global perspective mm -hmm. that people are people yeah, also yeah, helped yeah, to your point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think that um, as more people kind of get comfortable with understanding that it's a, it's a big world out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That, that's what I'm really the only at, race yeah. is the human race. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, in my field as a minister, theologian, teacher, we say that we were made in the image of God, and it's at this imago Deo in the Latin. They're saying you're, you're made in God's image, and if right. you're made in God's image, you're worth something. You, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. You know, so yeah. so I think that's great, and I'm, I think it's also great that your parents uh, poured into you that kind of a mindset because absolutely. so many young people— don't get that, right. you know? So that's great. And so uh, it sounds to me like you have laid a good foundation in business. Um, tell me something about the um, business side of it. That yeah. That is all the talents in the world, all the being in behind the camera and all that, mm -hmm. but there's a business side too. And so uh, do you have a business manager? Or are you doing the administrative pieces of your, your, are you doing it all? Yeah. I mean, I've done it all. So I've okay. gone through different cycles. Um, okay. Pre COVID I, I started building a team and everything was real um, rolling mm -hmm. and then COVID hits. Yeah. It's a reset button. Yeah. yeah. So COVID happens, you're back to doing it on, on yourself. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you start, about COVID. How yeah. did that impact your business? Cause everybody had, was impacted so, in some way. So, so what ways down, did it impact you? It shut down everything for like a couple months, you okay. know. Um, I remember once they announced COVID was here in Palm mm -hmm, Beach mm -hmm. and they started shutting everything down, that week I must have got like, I don't know how many calls, but I was losing tens of thousands of dollars wow. on the phone. <laughs> wow. Every phone call, I'm, I'm sitting here answering it. I'm like, it's another couple thousand. That's another Goodness. couple thousand. An event shut down. This is da da da. da. This is canceled. Um, mm. I've been here before. Yeah, like, yeah, <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. And sometimes you you have to you have to kind of rely <coughs> on what you've done before yeah. and know that you made it. You know that you you were able to get through. If I got through that, then I can get through this. Absolutely. Right. So, so, yeah. So that, that was kind of a perspective and it, it was like, you know what? I've done pretty good. Yeah. Like I've saved up some money Yeah. Um, that I can be able to kind of float through whatever kind of situation I'm currently in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it just hit the reset button. Then you, what do you have to do during COVID? You have to pivot. Yeah. So people started reaching out to me about, um, I think my first gig um, was like, Hey, are you, are you working? I was like, yeah, <laughs> you, you need me yeah, to work. Yeah, I'm working. What you, what you, what you need? <laughs> um, yeah, and they needed yeah. to do a a COVID a video about the COVID precautions and cleaning that they were doing to their office so that patients felt safe 
to come back to the office. Okay. So we created that and then we started pivoting to where um, a lot of things started moving online. So we started doing live streaming uh-huh. as services. Okay. Um, so um, we just kind of pivoted, rolled that, with the that, punches that. and just kind of did what we could. Yeah, that's and, the um, word, brother. Pivot. Yeah, you got to know it. when to pivot. Yeah. Sometimes you got to change streams, man. Yeah. Get into a different boat. Yeah. So, so it looks like you did. You so did that's what we did, that. yeah. yeah. And then... Um, Stuff started kind of growing back up, yeah, and um, we just kind of, kind of kept, kept it moving. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your story, your journey, uh, and the success that you're having now. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a witness. Yeah. Uh, because we've been able to utilize your services, and we were very pleased with it. Uh, I so I highly rec- recommend you, brother. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I, I, you do, you, you do, you do good work. I appreciate that. Um, would you mind if I have a word of prayer with you to just Absolutely. thank God for yeah. for you? So let let's let let me just pray with you, dear Lord. I, I'm I'm so grateful for what you have done with Kevin and how his life has inspired uh, so many others because uh, the story he has to tell. So we thank you, dear Lord. I thank you. I ask that you would continue to expand his boundaries and that uh, he will continue to be prosperous, not only materially, but both emotionally and spiritually. And that as he continues to see how you have influenced and poured into his life in ways unimaginable, that uh, the success has been the naming card for his life. So we thank you, dear Lord, for that. I ask that you would continue to go with him and bless him along the journey forward. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey, brother, We I have a member of my congregation that she's into creating her own tumblers and things like that. It's Ooh. called Mahogany Design. Mahogany Design. Mahogany Design. And on it, she has our logo, our name. So nice. I figure when I give it to people or who are my guests, yeah. every time they drink from it, they can yeah. think of power to be. So Absolutely. We, <laughs> so I need uh, one of these, uh, actually. Uh, so this is a perfect gift. Uh, Thank right. you so much. Well, good. And it says be connected, be creative, and be courageous. And it seems that you possess all those qualities. So thank you, brother, for being with us. I appreciate you. All thank right. you so much for having me. I hope you've enjoyed our show. I am so happy to have Kevin Lawson. His story is a story that's inspiring to me, and I hope it's a story that's inspired you as well. Thank you very much for joining us. We would like to thank this episode's sponsor, Living Word Christian Community, located at 2390 South Military Trail, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33415 where Dr. Terrell Bird is the lead pastor. The worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. in person, on Facebook, and Instagram Live.